I'm here with Professor Linda Partridge, uh, who is the director of the Institute of Healthy Aging at University College London, and also the managing director of the Max Planck Institute for Biology of Aging in Cologne, uh, Germany. So as you told us this morning in, in your talk, the recent revolution in aging research has been the discovery that mutations in single genes can actually prolong healthy lifespan in lab animals. So are these mutations found in the wild as well? That's a really good question. I mean, if they're so beneficial to health, then why aren't they the wild type? Exactly. And uh, my own view about that is that it, it's to do with the environment in which lab animals live compared to what goes on in the wild. They don't have to do anything much except eat, reproduce if they get the chance, mm -hmm. and live. So in that sense, they're very different from wild animals, which have all kinds of threats and problems. And they're also rather similar to humans in westernized societies. So although I don't think the mutants would survive very well in nature, they may not be at all a bad situation in which to look for things that might benefit mm -hmm. human societies. So you've been studying the trade-offs between, for instance, reproduction and longevity in Drosophila and other uh, lab animals. Could you tell us what these trade-offs are? Well, I think the closer we look at them, the less like trade-offs they look. So the main interventions that can increase animals, uh, increase lifespan in several different species are dietary restriction, eating less or these various mutants in the pathways that sense nutrition. And if you look at those right enough when they increase lifespan, they also do tend to decrease fertility. It looks as though at least some of the same genes are controlling those two traits. But one can pull them apart pretty easily. So with nutrition, you can mimic dietary restriction often by changing just a few amino acids in the diet. And if you get it just right, you can have a fly that's just as fertile as one that's fully fed and just as long-lived as one that's dietarily restricted. So the, these traits are not mechanistically tied together. They don't have to be. You can separate them. I think what these mutants that extend lifespan have told us, and dietary restriction as well, is that you can intervene in the aging process itself. So the animal lives longer and it stays healthier for longer. And particularly with dietary restriction, if you look at most systems in the body, it looks as though the process of aging is being slowed down in them. People are also looking more specifically, asking the question, well, if we slow down the aging process and we take also an animal model of an aging-related disease, so, for instance, in worms, flies and mice, there are models of age-related neurodegeneration, and ask, well, first of all, do we get disease-like symptoms? You can then say, well, what happens if we slow down aging with one of these interventions? Does that talk to this disease model and ameliorate the pathology. And it turns out that quite often it does. And so understanding that crossover at what point and how is slowing down aging, also slowing down the appearance of aging related disease, th that's a really important area of work at the moment and a lot of labs are doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah.